gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got a little bit of Sing a Happy Song by War in the background. And we're going to let War go off for right now because I got something I want to talk about. I've been, I've been interested in having a discussion about this because I've had a couple of people mention this to me over the past couple of days and it just, past couple of weeks actually, and it just so happens that the day's text for Jehovah's Witnesses is the following. The seventh day is a Sabbath of complete rest. It is something holy to Jehovah. That's why it was called the Lord's Sabbath. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said that he was Lord of the Sabbath, not the Lord Sabbath, but Lord of the Sabbath. He was the one put in charge of the Sabbath. Remember, God rested. So what did he do? He gave his son the duties after that. So why Jesus said, my father has continued working until now, and I keep working. Now, he rested with respect to the earth and the creation. It, it wasn't that he rested completely. Come on now. God ain't lazy. Man, Lord have mercy. Anyway, let me show you guys something. Let me show you something. And what I want to show you is Matthew's, the, I think it is 12.5. The problem is, I may have forgotten. Because it's not a scripture I go to all the time. You know what I'm saying, Vern? So we're going to do 12. We're going to go to verse 5. Uh-oh. Let's do that again. 12. Oh, my number lock is not on. 12. Okay, now we can go to verse 5. Now, let me tell you what Jesus had to say about the Sabbath. He says, Or have you not read in the law that on a Sabbath, the priests treat the temple, uh, it's priests in the temple, sorry, violate the Sabbath and continue guiltless? The, the priests violate the Sabbath? Well, how do they violate the Sabbath? Let's find out how the priests violated the Sabbath, ladies and gentlemen. However, on the Sabbath, the offering should be a two sound year old male lambs and two tenths of an epa measure of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering together with a drink offering. This is the burnt offering of the Sabbath, along with the regular burnt offerings and the drink offering. Ladies and gentlemen, you know the priests were required to render sacrifices on the Sabbath. So they worked on the Sabbath. Lord have mercy. So individuals could do work on the Sabbath. But let's find out what was the question Jesus had. Because I think his question was pertinent and parative. Imper no, parative. Notice what they were saying, these Pharisees. Since at that time, Jesus went through the grain field on the Sabbath. His disciples got hungry, and they started to pluck the heads of grain and to eat. At seeing this, the Pharisees said to him, Look! Your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, <laughs> Have you not read what David did when he and the men with him were hungry? How they entered into the house of God and they ate the loaves of presentation? Something that it was not lawful for him or those with him to eat, but for the priest only? Then he said the following, Or have you not read in the law? Ladies and gentlemen, you guys don't understand. The Pharisees were lawyers. So he asked them, have they not read? Because they are required to know the law. That's who the Pharisees were. That's why Paul could say he was a Pharisee and the son of a Pharisee. Because they were students of law. So he's mentioning to them, lawful, the law. That's what you do to the courts, people. That on the Sabbath, the priest in the temple violate the Sabbath and continue guiltless. But I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. Ladies and gentlemen, there are several lessons to be learned here. But the first thing you need to understand is it doesn't matter what your beliefs are. And most people say we are under the Sabbath, we're under the Ten Commandments. We're not under the Ten Commandments. Here's the reason why we're not under the Ten Commandments. Uh, I, I want to say the Ten Commandments are very important. The principles for which they were established will never end. How do we know this? Because we're going to go to verse 17 of the fifth chapter of Matthew. It's not a Bible lesson. This is just me having a conversation because, like I said, so many people have mentioned this to me. It says, this is Jesus talking. He says, do you think that I came to destroy the law or the prophet? I came not to destroy, but to fulfill the law. Truly I say to you, that sooner would heaven and earth pass away than for one smallest letter or one stroke of a letter to pass away 
from the law until all things take place. So the law could not be fulfilled until all things take place. So he said he came to fulfill the law. Okay, let's find out how he did that. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least, one of these least commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in relation to the kingdom of heaven. So all those people who are telling people about Christmas, that it's Christ's birthday, when the Bible doesn't say anything like that, or the kingdom of God is inside of you, when the kingdom of God is in the heavens. See, it says, in relation to the kingdom of the heavens, then they're teaching ones contrary to the law, and they will not be given any consideration respecting the kingdom of the heavens. You feel me? Ladies and gentlemen, y'all gotta hold on because I got a meeting that's gonna happen in a minute. One second. I apologize, that was someone who was uh, gonna be in the same meeting. Now the only other thing I wanna show you guys is Galatians. Because Jesus talked about fulfilling the law and Paul is gonna have that very same conversation about the fulfillment of the law. So Galatians, and it's the congregation of Galatians. And it was originally referred to as the anointed congregation of Galatians. Now most people think that Paul is just talking to everybody. They think that he's talking to everybody and not a specific group. So I want you to understand that Paul, an apostle, neither from men or through men, but through Christ Jesus and God the Father, who raised him up from the dead, to all the brothers with me to the congregation of Galatia. Now who were the members of this congregation? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, come on now. It is very important that we know to whom Paul was talking to. So he says, I am amazed that you are so quickly turning away from the one who called you. He's talking to the called ones, the chosen ones. Okay, that's whom he's talking to. He's not talking to everybody. He wasn't required to be talking to everybody. Okay? He's talking to them because these were the ones that Christ referred to as his brothers. These are the ones who cry out, Abba, Father. That's whom he's talking to. Okay? Now we're going to go to the third chapter. Why are we going to the third chapter? Because we need to find out what Jesus had to say regarding the fulfillment of the law. And Paul agreement with that. I said third chapter, not fifth chapter. Third chapter, we're going to go roughly about verse number 17 again. Um, or is it 11? I think it's... No. No, 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 no. I don't know. It is verse number 11 and 12, so we need to get here. It says, all those who depend on works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Curse is every one who does not remain in all the things written in the law, or in the scroll of the law, by doing them. Moreover, it is evident that by law, no one is declared righteous. The law couldn't declare a single person righteous with God. Why? That's why they had to offer up sacrifices, because they could not be declared righteous. If they were declared righteous then there would be no need for offering up animal sacrifices. The fruitage of the lips would be the sacrifice. It says, now the law, the law, we just talked about it, we're talking about that law that Jesus was referring to, is not based on faith. Rather, anyone who does the law, all 613 are the requirement. People think that it's only 10 commandments. It's 613 laws. Book of Leviticus, the law, first law, Book of Deuteronomy, second law. Now the law, all of it, is not based on faith. Rather, anyone who does these things, the law, will live by means of them. Christ purchased us with his blood, releasing us from the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? Does anybody know what the curse of the law was? Hold on. Paul's going to explain it to you. Cursed is everyone who does not remain in all the things written in the scroll of the law by doing them. So everyone who claims to be under the Ten Commandments must do all of the things written in the scroll of the law, and they don't. I have so many people telling me that we're under the Ten Commandments and they don't even do at least 0.011% of it. 
Now again, Christ purchased us by releasing us, the chosen ones, from the curse of the law, by becoming a curse instead of us. Because it is written, accused or accursed is every man hung on a stake. Christ was not hung on a cross. He was hung on a stake. How do we know? Because we're going to go to Deuteronomy 21, verse 23. Because this is the tradition. If a man commits a sin deserving of the sentence of death, Jesus was sentenced to death. You blaspheme! He should be put to death. What say you men? To the stake with him! Okay? And he has been put to death, the two evildoers and him. Hey, they're dead, Pilate. We stabbed him in the side, but the other ones, we broke their legs. Okay? His dead body should not remain all night on the stake. Hey, Pilate! Hey, hey, yo, what up, homie? Uh, let me get my boy off of the stake here. You know, I know, I know he did already. Let me take him down, okay? Uh, I got to take him down because it's a Sabbath and I can't, we can't leave him up there all night. I know, Pilate, but you know, man, I'm going to kick you something to that little ball you're going to be having later in the year. All right, my name is, you know my name. Come on, why are you sitting up here asking me my name? Yeah, Arimathea. Like, you, like, oh, oh, oh you just joking. All right. All right, no, 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 don't worry about it. I'm a joke, too, when it comes time for donating to you. No, I'm, you know, I, I understand you joking now. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, you sorry? All right, then. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Instead, you should be sure to bury him that day. Hey, Nicodemus, get on over here and help me. Prepare some spices and everything. No, I want the best, so you better go spend some money. All right, now let's wrap him up and put him in my tomb that I had borrowed out. You know how much money I spent to have this hole dug into this rock? You know how much work that took? But this is my boy, and he deserves the best, so I'm going to give him the best. I'm just going to have to build me another one. That's all right, he got my back, okay? Because the one hung up is something accursed of God. They said Jesus blasphemed. And blasphemy results in death. So the person is accursed or accused by God. And you should not defile the land that Jehovah your God is giving you as an inheritance. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what was going on. That's why Joseph of Arimathea went and asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. That's why it had to be taken down that night. That's why they said, that it is not lawful for us to do this or that. That's why they had to take his body down. I'm only doing this video because there are some people out there, one, who didn't know this information, or two, who thought something contrary to what the scriptures actually said. Again, the idea is to take the scriptures, just like we do the law, and go to its foundation for hanging people as a result of them being deserving of death and hanging them. This was the law. Now, unlike most of you, the Jews were adherents to the law. They followed the law to the letter. That's why so many of them were being stoned to death because they refused to follow the law. But the Pharisees, Sadducees, those were students of law. Okay, they wrote the law and they pay attention. They studied the law. So they had to follow the law. That's why Joseph of Arimathea, who was a member of the Sanhedrin, went and took the body down that night. They could not leave it up all night. But because it was the Romans at the behest of the Jews who put Jesus to death, they had to ask for permission. Interesting, ain't it? So I just thought I'd share that with you because so many people have been bringing up the issue about the Sabbath and we find out that Jesus, he fulfilled the law. So although the principles of the law, every day is the Sabbath. Every day should be a day holy to God. We should give him our best every day of the week. We're not under the actual law to where we have to sacrifice animals because none of you guys are offering up grain offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings and guilt offerings. Jesus was a propitiatory sacrifice for our sins, not for ours only, but for the whole world. Do you not recall the scripture? Just thought I'd bring that to some of your attention. Perpetuatory, meaning once for all times. That's why we don't have to sacrifice anymore. That's why you don't see the Jews sacrificing animals anymore. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that was 15 minutes talking about are we under the Sabbath. Gotta go. Take care of yourself.